Hello there and welcome. I'm Alexandra Vjos, an executive coach and a PGI consultant. I want to introduce you to some ideas I think you're going to love. I promise you, it will change your thinking and logic. And if you really let yourself get into this, it could change you and the bottom line of your company like night and day. Now, what makes this information different? I believe this is the best science in the world for self-achievement and it's time-tested knowledge. It's changed my life and my accomplishments so dramatically that it personally inspired me to pass this information on. And it's changed lives, people I worked with. It's really powerful. Now, just a little bit about myself. I've been in a corporate world for almost 10 years, and I, I worked with some very productive and effective individuals. And I also worked with people who just wanted to get through the day, not really accomplishing or doing what they were supposed to do. Some people were highly educated, very smart, yet they didn't get things done. Whilst others perhaps didn't have the degree, yet were very committed and extremely productive. What I was always wondering is, what is the primary cause of an individual's results? And how to motivate team members permanently, not just for a day or few, but in the long term, so they can all contribute to a company's growth and prosperity. You see, when people in a company become more productive, the increase in profit goes right to the bottom line. Now, think about that. All the expenses are looked after. The overheads looked after. The individuals just raise the bar they become more productive. That, of course, earns greater profit for the company and it goes right to the bottom line. After working with Bob Proctor himself, and he is the best teacher on human potential and success, and after being personally mentored by him, I have seen results that would actually shock the average individual. If I were to tell you, some of you may probably have difficulties believing me, but I would rather tell you how I can accomplish those results. Now, although I believe that profit is the, profit is the first order of business, because without profit, you're going to go out of business, I don't see that as a purpose of any human organization. I believe that the purpose of all human organizations is to make life more meaningful. The process that I'm about to explain to you is highly structured, contains the rules that we absolutely must know, understand and apply in order not to only increase profit, but to make life more meaningful for all of the individuals in your company. I want you to think about this for a second. Think of the number of times you've got into a hotel. So let's just say you booked into a hotel. Think of all the people who are serving you in that hotel. Do you know if all these people left, if they were all taken out of the hotel, you wouldn't even have a hotel any longer. You would just have a brick and a huge building with a bunch of stuff in it. Well, that's the same with your company. You take all the people out of your company and you don't even have a company anymore. You've just got buildings and things and systems that sit there, nothing's happening. You see, a company is really its people. When I started to really understand this, my whole life changed. My mentor said to me, Listen, if you're going to change your world, 
you've got to change yourself. He quoted Huxley, the English, great English writer. He said, the, there's only one corner of the universe you can change, and that's your own self. And he got me to study me. And once I understood who me is, I could easily understand how other people think too. You see, you and I are programmed with, with an understanding or not, we're programmed genetically and environmentally. And when the true meaning of this statement finally clicked in my head, my productivity, my well-being, and results in every area of my life improved. It felt like magic at first. There's nothing magical about it, though. It's all about knowing and understanding the rules to success. And there are rules to follow. When I saw my results changing so fast, I decided I was going to start to teach it. The information is put together in a very organized, coherent manner, easy to understand and follow. What I'm really doing is just teaching individuals and teams and companies to do what they already know how to do. You see, one of the things we know is to how to do a better job, but we're not doing it. Do you know that thinking is the highest function that you and I are capable of? All of the great leaders throughout history have been in complete and anonymous agreement on that one point. You and I become what we think about. Well, there are probably a lot of people who would disagree with that, but all the wise ones were in complete and anonymous agreement on that point. Even though they've disagreed of about everything else. Earl Nightingale, who was a dean in personal development, once said, if the average person said what they were thinking, they would be speechless. I remember laughing when I first heard it, but, and I kind of thought, well, everyone thinks. But you know, the truth is very few people think. Start listening to the conversations going on around you and you'll realize that people are not thinking or they would never say what they're saying. Stand back objectively and just watch and listen. Now, rather than spend a lot of time talking about the power of this information, let me mention that this information gets results and they are permanent results. I know you may have been involved in some studies or programs or seminars in the past where you would see a blip on the screen, but then the results would go back to where they were. No great change. I'm talking about the quantum leap in results. I'm talking about results that you would have difficulty buying into and that people already know how to do. So I'm going to ask you to sit back and relax for a moment as I explain some of the things that I have mentioned over the past few minutes and the information that I've learned over the past few years. And I've been sharing this information with people all over the world. And I love seeing their life transforming. Now, what I'm about to introduce is a process that is the best process and best piece of information I've ever seen. There, is, there was a man by the name of Lincoln, who was a president of Lincoln Electric, Electrical at one time. And he said, companies have historically left the greatest resource largely untapped. And that resource is the intelligence, the initiative, the productive power and talent in every individual. After being in a corporate, corporate world for 
almost 10 years, I'm inclined to agree with him. We get so busy with things we're doing, with projects that we're working on, with systems that we're installing, we forget about people. We forget that the greatest scientist in life will not even guess what your lowest producer is capable of doing. There is genius locked up in everyone. We've got deep reservoirs of talent and ability within us, and we historically have left it lying dormant. Our educational system does not bring it to the surface, as you will see later on. Now, there are two things that people have to know if they're going to win. And if you look at it first, you will say, well, that's pretty obvious. They have to know where they are and they have to know where they're going. And when things aren't happening the way we want, the first place we should look at is results. You see, if this is so simple and so obvious, then why there are so many people stuck? They take a look at their results and they keep getting the same results over and over again. If you have someone who comes to work late, they probably do it frequently. Another person shows up early, they probably do it frequently too. And we say, I know, I know what the problem is. They have no goals, they have no direction, they have no reason to grow. But I have found out that that's not really true. They may not have the goals in writing, they may not be too articulate, but everybody wants something. That comes from the essence of who we are. They want to express themselves in a greater way. So now we have found out the problem lies in where they are. I'm not talking about geographically, I'm talking about mentally. They really don't know where they are at mentally. You see, we can go right through our educational system and learn very little about who we are. We are programmed. We are programmed genetically and environmentally. Paradigms literally control our lives. They literally control our lives. Paradigms, for most part, are like red lights. It causes people to reach a certain level and then stop. We know how to do better, but we stop. I'm going to turn it into a green light because I'm going to show you exactly why people stop and then how to turn that green light on and get going. John Ruskin put this really well. He condensed what I've just said in a few words. He said, education does not mean teaching people what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. Now think about it for a moment. When I was a little kid, my mother would say, why did you do that? I would say, I don't know. She'd say, what do you mean you don't know? You know better. I know. So why did you do that? I don't know. I want you to think of some of the people in your company. You've taught them how to do something and they're not doing it and you see them continually make the same mistakes. Why are they not doing that? They, they really don't know, and they don't even know they don't know. As we get into this later on, things will start to really move forward. Paradigms shape our log logic. A paradigm is fixed concept in our mind. It's our fixed belief system. You see, at one time, you know and I know that everybody believed the world was flat and that was logical. I mean, 
how could you live on the side? Forget the bottom. It was an accepted fact that planes could not fly. Planes have always been able to fly. It's just that the Wright brothers became aware of how to make it happen. They stepped out of the box. They started to think illogically. Our logic controls our perception. Our perception is our point of view. Our perception is our reality. What has really changed my life and results in a very short period of time was learning and understanding my paradigms, the primary cause of my results. How did I do it? I followed a very structured process. All this process is designed in such a way that it helps people alter the logic by creating a greater awareness and changing perceptions. It's very powerful. Listen to this. Our paradigms literally control how we utilize our time. Everyone gets the same amount of time. We get all there is. Why is it that some people produce? They're so much more productive in a given period of time than others. We know that some people will accomplish more in a month than other people will in an entire year. I could honestly tell that I accomplish more now in a week, in any given week, than I used to accomplish in a few months. In a matter of months, I have accomplished more than in the first few years of my professional life. How did that happen? I've changed my paradigm. Our paradigm controls our effectiveness. It, it controls our productivity. And get this, something everybody wants to change. They all want to learn how to earn more money. Well, our paradigm controls that too. Our ability to earn money is literally controlled by our paradigm. You see, a person earning 50,000 a year is not automatically going to think how to earn 50,000 a month. No, they are programmed to think of how to earn 50,000 a year. So paradigms are really a big deal. Now, we have to ask, what are paradigms? Paradigms are a multitude of habits, but this is the interesting part. You see, they are other people's habits that have been passed from one generation to the next. We inherited almost all of our belief systems. We didn't originate them ourselves. Culture is nothing but group, group habit. That's a paradigm. We move into a different culture and we say, they're different. No, they just appear to be different. A, corpor a corporation has a culture. They have a paradigm and as the paradigm of the corporation shifts, the whole company changes. Now, the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. I think we know that. When we're talking about paradigms, we're talking about the mind. Now, let me shift gears for a moment. I want you to think of your car. Really think about it. Think out loud. What color is it? Now, you've got a picture of your car in your mind, right? Okay. I want you to think of your refrigerator. Now you've got a picture of your refrigerator in your mind. Now get these pictures straight. We think in pictures, you know. If you think of a feather, you don't think F-E-A-T-H-E-R. You get a picture of a feather. The same is true when it comes to a hot air balloon. You get a picture of a balloon. You don't spell it, you see it. You see here is a question for you. Ask yourself, what does your mind look like? You see, that's a question that no one can answer because no one has ever seen the mind. 
We've never seen the mind. Now, when we try to think of the mind, because nobody's ever seen the mind, something happens. We become very confused. That's really what happens. However, out of confusion comes order. It's a higher degree of order, higher than that which existed prior to the confusion. If you had an image of the mind, you would eliminate it any confusion. When I think of the mind, I have order in my mind. In 1934, Dr. Thurman Fleet was very involved in the healing arts and holistic health. And he said the mind is an activity, not a thing. No one has ever seen the mind. However, we must have an image or there is no order in the mind. I will create an image and eliminate confusion. So here it is. I call it stick person. It's a stick person. And here is your mind. The top half of the large circle is called the conscious mind. The bottom half is the subconscious. And then the body is the instrument of the mind. So as you watch a person's body move or do the things it does, what you're really doing is seeing the expression of the activity that's going on in the mind. Listen to this. Results are symptoms. Balance sheets are symptoms. Income is a symptom. Relationships are symptoms. What is the cause of those symptoms? Somebody was telling me about it and, and I knew I had to enroll in it and I started to study it. I wasn't interested in it from a medical perspective. I was interested in it from a behavioral perspective. We've got all kinds of behavioral scientists who will treat behavior and that won't change the results. You can say that behavior causes results. Yes, but it's a secondary cause. We've got to go to the primary cause. When John Kennedy asked Dr. Werner von Braun what it would take to build a rocket to carry a man to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, his response was very simple. The will to do it. Remember that word will. The will to do it. The will is a mental faculty we're going to talk about. It's a very powerful part of our personality. The subconscious mind must accept whatever you give to it. Your company is nothing but the manifestation of an idea somebody was involved in. You see, we have the ability to create an image in our mind. Turn it over to our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is our universal mind, and that idea must be expressed with and through the body. The body is an instrument of that mind, and that's what moves us into action and produces the results we get. Now, this is so obvious and so simple. As I mentioned um, in one of the first graphic illustrations I gave you, but why so many people are stuck? If it's so obvious and simple, why so many people are stuck? Well, this is what I'm going to show you. The next two drawings are going to represent the same person. The one on the left represents you now. The one on the right represents you when you were an infant, when you first arrived on the planet. Now, there is a huge difference. I'm going to have to change the picture. You see, when you first arrive, you had no conscious mind. So I'm going to take this off and eliminate that. The subconscious is wide open. 
it must accept anything you give to it. You see, it doesn't have the ability to accept or reject. It must accept. So whatever was going on around you, all the ideas, the thoughts, the, the images that were going on around you as a baby went into that baby's mind. Now, this is how you and I became an adult, a thinking adult. That's you, that's me, that's Harry or Betty who works at the next desk. It's Joe, the salesperson, or Jackie, the admin. Our mind is programmed. And we were programmed repeatedly with the same thoughts and images day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, for the first three or four years of our lives. And the information that was being programmed into our mind built our self-image. You have people in your company who have a very strong self-image. They just know they can do certain things. Others, they're pretty sheepish, quiet, withdrawn. They don't think they can do very much. Why? Do you know it's been established that a child raised with a lot of praise becomes very confident? A child raised with a lot of criticism is very insecure when they grow up. If you take a look at the drawing on the left, that's you now. You have in your subconscious mind what's called a paradigm. A paradigm is a multitude of habits that have been fixed there and they were fixed there before you even had the ability to think. Now, let's take this and change the scene a little bit. Here is the child and the paradigm. You can think of yourself or you can think of some, somebody else. As they reach the age of reason, this is when the conscious faculties begin to develop and things start to happen. The conscious mind is developing. The paradigm is there. You see, those little antennas, those little sensory factors are our senses. We can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Now, here's what you want to grasp. You see the paradigm? This person has been programmed from birth to go by what they see, what they hear, what they smell, what they taste, and what they touch. All of their directions came from the outside world. Now, the heavy hitters, I'm talking about the big producers, they operate differently. They are directed by something from inside. We're told, go to our closet, close the door, go to the sanctum, go to the inner quiet voice from within. But we have been trained and programmed. I'm talking about the masses now. We have been trained and programmed to live through our senses. There's only about one or two percent of people who operate differently, but 90 some percent operate the way I've just described. So you see, Information is coming in from outside. The conscious mind is also the intellectual mind. Do you know Napoleon Hill pointed out in his work, and now keep in mind, he studied with 500 of the most successful people and did research his entire life. He wrote The Laws of Achievement. He said, an educated person is not necessarily a person with an abundance of general or specialized knowledge, 
An educated person is a person who has so developed the faculties of their mind that they can acquire anything they want or its equivalent without violating the rights of others. Now, I want to ask you a question that I've asked 200 business owners for the past few years. What are the intellectual factors? I could not get one person to tell me what they were. Can you answer that question? Just acknowledge it to yourself. What are the intellectual factors? Well, we have perception, the will that Von Braun was talking about, imagination, memory, intuition, and reason. Do you know that we have a perfect memory? We have perfect imagination. We have a perfect reasoning factor. Our perception, our perception is our point of view. Two people can look at the same thing and see something totally different. You see, as you raise your level of conscious awareness, your perception of things change. As you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. We've got these phenomenal faculties. Imagination. We're discouraged from using it at the very early age when we go to school. It's called not paying attention and the child is punished. Why do we have large organizations and very small creative departments? Well, what we have to understand, if we're really going to change the paradigm, it's through the use of our intellectual factors. We're going to cause the paradigm to believe, get it out of the way, and we're going to change and begin to use the subconscious mind the way it was meant to be used through the aid of our intellectual factors. And that's what the whole information, the whole process does. It shows people how to utilize what they've already got. Do you know, the fact that we have smartphones right now, today, that's, that's why we have television. That's why we've got space travel. That's why I can touch a little phone that I carry in my pocket and send a message to a hundred people at the same time. As soon as I touch send, it simultaneously sends it to all these places all at the same time. Where did that come from? It was always here. We just weren't aware of it or of how to do it. The way to fly was always here. Well, the way to raise productivity in a company is already here. Look at it for a moment. If you and I, we have the ability to think, create an image, we can impress that image upon the subjective mind and then we will act on that and we can change the end result. I want you to stop and think of what might happen if everyone in your company really understood this. I'll tell you one thing what would happen. They would have a lot more fun. They wouldn't work anywhere near as hard and they would produce much better results there would be more cohesiveness. There would be more teamwork. They would be involved in a creative adventure. Competition would be set aside. Cooperation would rule. Well, that's what I really want to do. So listen to this. I'm going to show you how to alter your paradigms to create the results you want. I've been playing with this information for the past few years. My life has changed in every area. My mentor has been teaching this information since 1961. 
I work with clients all over the world and I can tell you stories that are absolutely shocking. My clients triple their income within months, became more productive at work, happier in life. From an average salesperson, they went to a top in a company. I would like to sit down and I would like to talk to you about what I could do in your company. I want to talk to you and your company. We will dig into specifics and you're going to be quite pleased because it gets results and the results that will literally shock you. I have been doing this for some time and I've been watching people succeed. I think it's obvious I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's an absolute shame. Excuse me. I think it's an absolute shame that most people go from the cradle to the casket and never find out who they are. Our educational system does not give them that information. Forget about everything you've learned and let me come in and talk to you like that everything will change. Please contact me or go to my website for more information. This is Alexandra Vjoss. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and attention.